Okay, so we are in Vav. Vav. Sivan. Yom Yom. And as always, let's start with Rafur Shlemus. Go ahead. Anybody? Uh, yes, I can go. Fega Bas Shoshana. So, Haban Rafur, she should have a quick recovery now. Barach ben Yaman ben Rachablima, Yehudas Golda bas Elisa Hana, Hava Daniela bas Naomi Hana, and Shoshana bas Hana. Amen. Before Shlema Bekorev, Yitzhak Fivish ben Braina Malka, to have a Rafur Shlema Bekorev. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. So Vav, uh, Vav Thomas in our Yom Yom is 68. The effect of each particular mitzvah act is called forth by doing, right? You've been commanded, that's a mitzvah. The commandment also means to join us with him and to make the effect that joining is through doing. And the effect of a particular mitzvah is called call, call forth by doing those other mitzvah acts, which are makif. Now, this is a little bit of a news, that the there are mitzvahs which are called makif, meaning all-encompassing. And by doing those all-encompassing mitzvahs, as we've been describing, there's a makif, all-encompassing kind of light, which is infused into the detail light, the male, who fills all worlds. So he's putting on the table here that certain makif, all transcendent, all encompassing mitzvahs, they are imbue and empower and give added life to the specific mitzvahs, as he'll explain. So there are mitzvah acts, I'm reading back inside, which are makif, general and all encompassing in nature. The mitzvah for tzedakah, tzedakah, for example, is one of those all encompassing makif mitzvahs, as evident from the reference to all mitzvahs by the term tzedakah. All mitzvahs are called tzedakah. For this reason, it is most appropriate to give a coin to tzedakah before performing any mitzvah, so that the makif comes into the panimi. This is the language, of course, that we've been discussing in Tanya for a week, perhaps, by now. This has the effect of bringing the general, the makif aura, into the panimi, the inner aura, the inner aspect, the particular mitzvah. Nonetheless, this type of makif, this, for instance, tzedakah, is called a close aura, whereas the makif of Torah is a distant aura whose effect is superior. <clears throat> and uh, one can explain this uh, in Hasidus. There are levels in makif, even though in general there is a quality of light which is transcendent, in that itself, there are levels of all-encompassing, right? So a marshal for this is what makes all the organs of our body uh, a single entity called a human? There's a skin which surrounds everything, right? And this skin on the finger is the same skin on the head. That's a, a metaphor for makif. It's everywhere the same. <laughs> Uh, this is called a close makif, right? It, it can come, it, it holds all of my body together. Now, my body at the moment is sitting in a father, a more distant makif called a room. This room that I'm in with that weird, weird roaring fan in the, in the circle in the, in the top of the ceiling is encompassing my body. It's a more distant makif. And the room is in a house. And one would go, could go on and on. So if, you see, there are levels of all encompassing this. And the Torah <clears throat> is a, as is the last sentence, is a distant aura whose effect is superior because God's very essence is invested you know, in the Torah. God's will is a makif, it's called keser. His essence is way, way, way more makif, more deep than that. And his essence is in the Torah. At least that's one way of explaining. He levels of Makif. All right. So the, the bottom line is uh, give tzedakah. <laughs> give, uh, learn Torah. 
and let those, I mean, for by example, let those two makif tickets infuse every aspect of your panemius, of your individual activities each and every day. Back to lesson in Tanya on the subject of or makif and or panemi. So we're doing today uh, two days. We're doing six today and Shabbos, which is seven. Six begins on page 965. Oh, by the way, there will not be a class on Sunday because I have to drive at that time of day uh, to a simcha. And uh, so on Monday, we'll pick up Sunday and Monday, similar to as we do on Friday, where we pick up Friday and Shabbos. Okay, page 965, and in Lakuti Amorim, page um, 174, 174 from the bottom up, one, two, three, four, five, six lines up from the bottom over on the left. So, we were speaking about the ten spheros. And the Zohar says that Hashem draws forth these ten tools. We call them, nicknamed them yesterday, tools. These ten tools by which he creates uh, the worlds. And we ended the, the language of the Zohar, and he himself is hidden within those tools, each sphera. So now he's going to speak about the spheres more particularly. Alder Marshall, by way of example, on the first day of creation, first on the first first of the six days of creation, Niglis there was revealed the attribute of Chesed. So we all know what was created, what came into the level of creation. That's a better way of saying it. what came into the level of creation out of his essence, where was brought forth light. Through the meter of chesed, right? When one is kind, one emanates, radiates, expresses himself, comes closer towards somebody. So meters of chesed. And meters of chesed, kalula mekol of hakadoshis. And this meter of chesed, as again, when we often point to spheros ha'oimer, all the meters inter-include each other. So this meter, to get expressed from an allness, it requires, if you just think about it, to get expressed requires some kind of contraction. So that's the, in, so embedded in chesed, which is extension, is ext is contraction, which is the midah of gevura. So we call it also, but it's, so the midah of chesed includes kol midahs of akadoshis, all the other holy midahs, but it's so inoi v'chakmasi and including chabad, and all those things are meluboshim ba, they are embedded in the Mida of Chesed. The predominant, what you see, is the Chesed. But Chesed has in it a way of being delivered, which is subject to, you know, think, think of yourself. I'm doing an act of kindness. But I'm doing, I'm thinking about how to approach this person. That's part of my seichel. What exactly I'm going to say. You know, so all of those details, the detail of the expression is embedded in the basic notion in the first place of expressing kindness. So all those things, all the other ten spheros, another other nine spheros are embedded in it, they're enclosed in it. And all the other nine and chesed are brought to the level of creation, or in simply speaking, he creates in it, or the light which is within it, or when he says, let there be light. In other words, let the light which has been ganus, which has been hidden, concealed in my allness, Come into actual actual uh, effectiveness in a lower state, which is the state of Bria. or or. So when he says, so to speak, right? When he says, so to speak, let there be light. He's investing that inner light, that light which existed before the simsum, in a manner that it should flow and should be drawn down. This ha'or, this light, la'olam to the world, milamayla from above, from above, bihastu, hispachtushi ba'olam, esoifa'olam, and this light, 
is creating all the worlds with us. So this light flows from one world to the other, from the end of one word, world to another, to the end of it. And that's the meaning of a chesed. Unlimited extension, but it's in the form now of a mida, meaning it's measured, which is the part of the gavura that's embedded within it. Before that, it had no expression at all. It was contained and self contained in the self who is the self of all selves, right? God Himself before it was emanated. But as it emanates, this mida of chesed, he says, Rak Gavura, since the mida of gavura is in is in, in there with, within it. Therefore, it's not, he says, as spiritual as the light which had been existed at a deeper state uh, before the, he uttered it into creation. This Gavura quality brings a contraction to such an extent that this light is actually able to be enclosed in this world, this physical world. Which is a manner of boundedness and conscription, meaning it's it's ended and has a tachlis and an end. Also means, of course, purpose, but that's more of a drush than a pshat. And the you Gogamor know, Hagiga gives a, a metaphorical um, expression of this distance from the top down to this world by saying that this is a distance of uh, 500 years. From the earth to the rakia. And that's just one level above, from the planet earth to that first level, which we call heaven. I mean, it's not, doesn't, I've never seen any direct correspondence between that and physical or other spiritual realities. Maybe they exist, but I haven't seen it. So, but it's expressing the notion that distance itself is a metaphor for the level of expression uh, that comes out of Hashem. From, and, and this sense here, we're saying 100 years from the earth to the first firmament. And other dimension, the Mizrach Lamaira, from east to west, right? So the Tafka of Shon is the bottom to top, and then east and west. And those four directions are all manifestations of something which had previously been hidden before it was exposed. And likewise, that's on the first day we just discussed. On the second day, on the second day, the predominant was holding back. That's the day he created the rakia, the separation, right? And in the separation, of course, was included all the other midos, including the midah of Chesed, and the Ratzon, and the Hochman, and all ten spiros in the Ratzon, and with the predominance of the midah of Gevura, he created the rakia. As that's if you look in Berenshus, you see this. Let there be a firmament within the water. Water is free flowing. The firmament is stiff. It's equivalent to the transition from uh, the, the Yam Suf, the Red Sea, and the river flowing, and the making the river, the Yam Suf, into walls. There's a dis, right? Things became divided. And that's what he says. It uh, This firmament creates the division between the upper waters and the lower waters. Which is the uh, uh, exemplification of the Mida of Tsimson. Contraction, separation, Gevuras. To conceal the upper waters from the lower levels, the Halyonim Haruchnim, the Mayim Hatartoinim from the lower waters. And through this predominance of Gavura, it became lower and lower until it physicalized the lower worlds. As it separated them, so to speak, when I say that, because we have to keep in mind, right, that there's an Ormakif which is encompassing all of it, and Hashem himself is there. But in terms of the Ormamali, there's a separation of the upper from the lowers. And also, we'll remind ourselves that in the Gavoras, right, which is responsible for the differentiation of everything in the main, there's also included the Mida of Chesed. It says the world is built with Chesed. So there's a Chesed within every aspect of differentiation. There's a kindness in every severity. 
because we see what's the kindness in the severity, the severity meaning the separation, and if you psychologically, the separation, the feeling of being distant from that which you want to be close with, which is a function of distance, separation, is gevora. There's a chesed within it. And what's the chesed? That in order that dry land should appear, and there should be a human being, a Jewish human being, particularly on it, to serve Hashem. That's the chesed that's built into the world of world oilam, which is language of Hansem concealing himself. And he could just like we could go on with all the other mitos in this way. And this is what Eliyahu said in the section of Zohar called the Tikkunim. He's shown over there. To show us how Hashem conducts the world with tzedek, righteousness, umishpat, with kindness, mercy, sadaka, and at the same time with judgment. Tzedek, he defines, ihudin. Tzedek is not, tzedek is Judgment, mishpat ihurachame, not like I said, the averse of what I said. Tzedek is din, judgment, right? And tzedek, tzedek, uh, tirdov, you should pursue righteousness, which is affected, which is connected with building court systems. And mishpat is mercy, and the two are combined together, judgment and mercy. Kulam, and all of them, Zohar goes on and said, Kulam, la to show us how Hashem conducts the world. But this uh, din and judgment, which is within the worlds, is not the same as the or well, as it was in the or is in the place of origin before it's revealed. He says this that we see down here below that, that we have laws of the Torah, right? Judgments, dinim. Avalav the Yislot Tzedek but this is not representative of it the way it is up above. It's not his knowledge, his Yediyah, his, uh, his Tzedek, his righteousness is not the Tzedek Yediyah, the know, it's not a knowable Tzedek. We can't know it really because it's part of his essence. Diyu Din Vilei Mishpat Yediyah, because he, it says, he is the law and not with any known quality of Mishpat. The Hirachame, he's merciful, but Lav Mikol Idon Midas Klau, but his mercy in its source is not like the mercy that we see outside of its source, so to speak, as it descends lower and lower and lower. That's the end of today's time. And we're going to go on with Shabbos, but I always as always take a pause here to see if anybody has any comments or questions. Somebody does. Rosa, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So it seems like it's like I don't there's 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 Gavura and Chesed. And within the Gavura is the Chesed. Within everything is everything. It's a uh, fractal. Everything uh, every, all the wholeness is within every wholeness. Larger but really larger. really Mishpat would translate as Teferis. Yeah, that's what he said. That's I made a mistake, really, because I didn't think so either. But yes, mishpat ihu rachame. Mishpat Which is also, mercy. Yep. Mishpat, most of the time we think of as judgment, and then it says mishpat ihu rachame. I know, that's why I said I made a mistake myself. And he, Sedek, when Sedek, he says, ihu din, right? Sedek is din, as in be righteous, right? And righteous means righteousness i mean is interesting has a quality of din because right true righteousness is you're on this side you're not on that side that's sadik okay i mean what's the word there is sadik as we did in Tanya. sadik is one is wholly righteous right so so sadik is you have to uh, connect sadik with din because it means it's this way and it's not that way and then mushbat judgment when it comes to judgment you always look for mercy. You always look to be merciful, if you can, without without bending the law. So yeah, that's how he does it. Nir okay, Manusi yeah. said that the word tzedek is tzad, 
literally tzad, which is a side, and a hundred, which is like you're a hundred percent on the right side. There's no, there's no flexibility. Right. Yeah, I get, I get that. But oh, you're hundred percent meaning there's no flexibility. Good, good, good. Like tzedek, right. din. Like a tzadik. Like, uh, like a tzadik yeah. is one hundred percent on the right side. Good. Like, I don't know, like just... the, the, the truth is with me. Like I'm right. Like tzedek, tzedek, tirdof. Every each side thinks they're right. And uh, Mishpat, I guess, is 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 taking into consideration the bigger story and, and yeah, the possibility, uh, possibility of acquittal, compromising, and yeah, good. I'm just saying it because we're learning a well, lot I... about how Hashem is Yotzer or Uvore Choshech back yeah. back a couple of weeks ago. We learned that. Yeah, go ahead. So, so it's what? like the darkness is not really darkness. The darkness is a prelude to creation. Yes, I that's the tim, That's darkness, meaning the Simpson. The yeah. Simpson isn't for the sake of the Simpson. The Simpson is for the sake of a greater light. Okay, and but how does that apply be, here? No, this would be saying this because it's saying that but it includes, it, it says a few times that every includes sachesmi. the others. Sure. They have to, they all, they all inter-include each other. And the Choshech includes the R, because it's correct. Simpson made possible creation. Correct. <sighs> <laughs> this could take us very far if we really want to think. Well, we do want to think, but we also have to move on. Right. And but be on, we'll keep thinking. Okay, it's connected here. Vehine, next chapter, right? Chapter eleven. Gama Sura Memore. So we did two of them. We did light. Let there be light and let there be a rakia, predominant of, of chesed on the one and predominant of gevura, separation on the other. Now, these 10 utterances are called utterances only from our perspective. What's he mean by that? He says. We'll go back to the paradigm of that we are privileged and uh, uh, allowed by the Torah to be anthropomorphic, to look from the way we are in order to understand something about him. So we'll look at ourselves. That the measure, midos, in the soul of a person, in order to reveal these midos, the masa, indeed, in, in action. Pain boys, milubeshes, but oisis hamashava. First they come, these midos become at the, in clothes. Now the midos go into the three garments, thought, speech, and action. So the mida, I want to be kind. I think about how to be kind. The mida becomes enclosed in letters of thought. I'm thinking, and, and thought is, we're talking about here, conscious thought is letters. I'm, I'm processing in my brain different ways I could approach this that would be kindly. He uses, I'm using kindness because he uses kindness. We'll take the extra of kindness. And mercy, in the, as it is in the neshama before it's expressed outwardly. So it's a midah. It's impossible to become actualized without thinking about it. And thinking about the deed of tzedakah, the way you're going to manifest it, and kindness, you have to think about how to actualize it. So you can't do it without thinking about it. And also, you could think about it, and you could bring it to speech and ask someone else, listen, I can't be in Toledo, Ohio today, but I have a good friend there who needs a thousand bucks, and you happen to be going there on a convention, please take this to him, right? So you could do it, you could command or tell someone else to do it, to do it, the reason he uses command, because he uses a metaphor of a king. Azai, when when the king says to somebody else, do it, then there is enclosed, he is mida, the king's mida of chesed, and his letters, which had been previously just in his thought, in, in letters of speech. 
Or if a person speaks kindly or mercifully to a friend. So, similarly, whereas, by way of example, Hashem's blessed his midos, the Shaboy Slabikinus is galus when they become revealed, when the, when the effect of his midos becomes revealed down in the lower worlds. So, we call this revelation and the drawing down of this action, we call it speech, because it's the first process, next next process in bringing the Mida to materialization, in first in thought and then in speech. And so the Mida now becomes delivered in Sir of Oisius, in combinations of letters. This is all going to be a mushal and is a mushal for how Hashem comes expresses from his allness into his fine detail, right? From the mida comes a thought, from the thought comes a speech, and from the speech you, you command others or you do something and bring it down to deed. You command others to deed or you do the deed. Shariyevsha jetia shumpa ula nemshat. It's impossible for there to be any action which is drawn out the midoisib hakadoshis now we're back to Hashem, from his holy midos, without combinations, bringing forth combinations, which are called, called the Shem Oasis, which we call metaphorically letters. Again, for example, to create the light from the attribute of chesed, in other words, a beam of light, I get back in the metaphor. It has to be a, a action which is drawn out into action, the koyach lipfoil, and this power, the potential, has to come into actuality in order livrei boy esa or to create the light. The light is in a non non-perceptible, unperceptible, imperceptible in him himself. There's nothing perceptible in himself because he's called Taklas Apishitis. He's the ultimate of simplicity. No thing, that's why we call it ayin, no thing can be seen if you're looking into Atzmas, even though that itself is an impossibility because you couldn't exist if you were in Atzmas. As we've learned before, you'd be your thingness would be dissolved back into the allness. But for this allness to come out in some degree of specificity, which we call or light. In the drawing down of this power, Vichayas, in this life for Zu, Nicholas Bashem Maima. We call that metaphorically speech, the Oisius, and we call it letters. As they say, right now we have letters on the table. Ye, he, or. That's from Bereshis. Let there be light. That's Hashem Himself bringing His essence into something called light. Ye, he. Let it be. Let it, ye, he is Bashem Havius, right? I'm making into being in a way that's going to be useful to lower worlds a light, which has a source in a previous state, which was not, to use my own expression, useful yet. Even though this language we're learning about Hashem's thinking is not like our thinking, it's a metaphor. It's not like our thinking, God forbid. These letters and this bringing letters into actuality is something which does show and give us some insight into the coming into being of light, me'ayin, from the nothing, which is the all-inclusive something, layesh, to particularize beings. So similarly, this light, so to speak, has been created, so to speak, Created meaning brought to the level of Bria, instantiation, this power. And this particular energy, we'll call it now, that's energy that had been latent in him, meaning not expressed, comes into these particular words, which are light, and that's, and only light can be instantiated from light. Other things will be instantiated by other speaks. So this is uh, from Yehi or you're not going to get other things. You're going to get light. 
not other things, not the other things which have been created also, other things were also created from Midas of Chesed, like Mayim. Mayim is Chesed, Mayim flows, right? But it's not light. So that's, you're going to get that Chesed in a different form from the Oisius, let there be water. Or I and the other utterances like this. Because these other things, even though they may express God's chesed, they're embodied in different combinations of, of letters. In this case, different combinations of letters, which is mem, yud, mem, mayim, which shows on something else other than light. So the nimsa comes out. That all the life force and the powers which are drawn from God's holy midos to the lower worlds, the borom, to create them, which really means to bring them forth from no thing to something, and to enliven them and keep them in existence. That's what we call letters. Oisis HaKadoshis, holy letters. Shehein, these holy letters are, metaphorically, they are the drawings down of the life force from God's will, and from his wisdom and his midos, to bring worlds into being and to enliven. And we have two kinds of worlds, two big groups of worlds. Almin steaming, the hidden worlds, the Leis Galion, this is the language of the Zohar, that are not revealed. They are drawn into being and into life, and they exist from concealed powers. Which fit our metaphor, letters of thought which nothing external has has access to my letters when they're just in my thought. But they're letters. So we call them oilimus, right? Because they are particularized energies. However, they exist inside Hashem. Therefore, they're called omen steaming, the hidden worlds. As it is, I, I've got a world inside me. I'm not letting you in. Because, because as long as it stays in my thought and I don't have a expressive, an outwardly expressive relationship with you, you're left guessing. What are you all about? And then we have the revealed. Now they are brought into existence. They are created. So it's just interesting now we're learning. Creation is, is not boom. Something It's it is ultimately something from nothing, but that nothing is not nothing. That nothing is the inner dimensions of Hashem become expressed in the outer dimensions, and we call them revealed worlds. In this Galu, Koikasum, Shokas, and Nolim, where the powers are now revealed, which those inner powers which are now revealed, those inner powers were powers of thought. And when those inner powers become revealed, the Hachis Olmen des Galgion to reveal revealed worlds, Nikrois Bashem Maimoris. Then they're called speech. The Devar Hashem, the speech of God, the Ruach Piv, and the breath of his mouth. Just like the letters of speech by a person need a breath from the chest and the five uh, uh, aspects of the mouth, which can, the, the five ways in which this air goes out of the mouth in order to make physical letters. Just like, and that's the letter of, uh, letters of speech by a person, of Derek Marshall, by way of a metaphor. Shehen megalis l'shoimim, or biglois, they reveal, letters of speech reveal to an outsider, to one who's hearing, that which was hidden, concealed in your heart. So worlds are expression of what was concealed in God's heart. The whole creation was made by speech. And he spoke the world into existence to reveal his heart, what he wants, what he really wants. This physical world, and as we said earlier, 
with an Adam within it to serve him. So that's uh, Shabbos for you. Any comments, questions on that part or any part or anything? Okay, Ubechain. Therefore, hello, it's Raisa. So, Logo. we were in a very beautiful place at the Arboretum, which is just a garden surround. If you, you could come to a spot where there's a garden, it's just surrounded by sky, and um, it was a group. And I got everybody to sing Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly oh, everywhere. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was it. And that's that's the Bechain. You certainly got it. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you Monday, Amir Tzashem. Skipping Sunday, because I as I said earlier, I have to drive that time. So Monday morning, Mirza Shem. Have a great Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Thank you.